Welcome to the Schofield Biblical Institute Hour, the Bible teaching ministry of Schofield Biblical Institute and Theological Seminary. This program is dedicated to bringing you relevant insight into the biblical text that pertains to our time. Shalom again. Welcome to another edition of Search the Scriptures. I'm Dr. Todd Baker, Director of Barit Chadashah Ministries in Dallas, Texas. Barit Chadashah Ministries is devoted to the faithful exposition of God's Word and explaining the Jewish nature of the Christian faith. We also are a ministry that is committed to Jewish evangelism in Israel. We go uh, several times a year and take the gospel back to the Jewish people in accordance with the divine order of evangelism laid out in Romans 1.16. The gospel is to go to the Jew first. And to read about our gospel ex- exploits among the Israelis in Israel, we have a newsletter, a quarterly newsletter uh, entitled Search the Scriptures. And this is the summer edition 2018. You can uh, have a copy of your own by way of snail mail or on the internet. It's free. Uh, you can write to us and request it at Barit Chadashah Ministries, BHM, Dallas, Texas, P.O. Box 796127, zip code 75379. I also lead a small Messianic congregation every Friday night. Shalom, Shalom, Messianic congregation it is called. And we meet uh, every Friday evening at 7 p.m. at Northwest Bible Church in the Christian Life Center building, third floor, room 301. The church is located at 8505 Douglas Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75231. You can also contact us by phone if you would like to uh, receive our newsletter and give us uh, your address in the Christian Life Center building, third floor, room 301. The church is located at 8505 Douglas Avenue, Dallas, Texas, 75231. You can also contact us by phone if you would like to uh, receive our newsletter and give us uh, your address. We are also uh, accessible on the web at www.searchthescripturesonline.org. All right, well, today I want to talk about Ephesians 1, 13 through 14. And the title of today's teaching is God's Sealing of the Holy Spirit Secures and Saves All Believers. God's Sealing of the Holy Spirit say, uh, Secures and Saves All Believers. And our text, of course, is Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. And here we have... Uh, the sealing of the Holy Spirit mentioned by the Apostle Paul. It's mentioned by name three times in the New Testament, and here it deals with the moment a born-again believer is sealed. The moment occurs when he truly believes on the gospel, as Paul will tell us. So let's look at Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14. And Paul writes, In him, that's Jesus Christ, in him you also trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. Remember Paul said in uh, the book of Romans, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So here he says uh, to the Ephesian believers that they trusted after they heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also, having believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Verse 14. Who is the guarantee of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. Note here that God's glory is the supreme purpose of our redemption in the Lord Jesus Christ. And this redemption, if we go back up in verse 11, was predestined. It was before the earth was formed that God sovereignly determined that every elect sinner, 
however vile, useless, and deserving of death, by trusting in Christ would be declared righteous. And they would do so through trust and belief in the gospel. So let's focus in on God's sealing, his work of a sealing on the believer by the Holy Spirit, as Paul mentions here in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. In 1909, the Good Housekeeping magazine uh, established the now well-known and famous Good Housekeeping Seal of Approval to test the quality and legitimacy of home products used in the home. After repeated testing, if the product was good as advertised, the proven product received the prestigious housekeeping seal of approval, meaning that the product was given the seal of acceptance to be recommended for purchase and use. To have the good housekeeping seal of approval was to have the guaranteed warranty of two years backed up by the Good Housekeeping Institute. In a similar way, folks, every born-again Christian has God's housekeeping seal of approval, verifying that he or she has been guaranteed salvation with God's warranty of eternal salvation that cannot expire or become defective. The seal is for time and eternity. And this is exactly what God does for the believer when he seals the born-again Christian with the Holy Spirit at the time of salvation. The sealing of God's Holy Spirit is activated only when the sinner believes the gospel. This act of redemptive sealing involves all three persons of the Trinity as disclosed here in Ephesians chapter 1. First, the sealing is ordained, is ordained by the sovereign election of the Father, Ephesians 1, 3 through 6. Second, the redemptive work of the Son, Ephesians 1, 7 through 12. Third, it's confirmed with the sealing of the Holy Spirit, as we see here in Ephesians 1, 14. The sealing note here from our text immediately occurs when the believer hears the gospel of Jesus Christ and trusts in it. The sealing spoken here, the sealing spoken here occurs the moment true belief is expressed in the gospel. The sealing of the Holy Spirit of the believer should be considered God's seal of salvation approval upon the life of the saved sinner. Faith and belief in the gospel work together in tandem with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will always work through the power of God's Word and not apart from it. God, the Holy Spirit, saves and seals through the Word of Truth, the Gospel, and those who believe in it. We learn that from Ephesians 1.13 here. The Holy Spirit will always work through the power of God's Word and not apart from it. The Holy Spirit cannot be separated from the ministry of the Word. He comes to seal those who believe in the gospel and cannot be brought to indwell and seal the believer by any other way. For instance, induced by ritual sacrament, induced, for instance, it cannot be done any other way except through uh, belief in the gospel. It cannot be done any other way other than by this way. And so, the Holy Spirit will seal the believer or those who believe in the gospel and not in any other way. For instance, uh, induced by a ritual, sacramental rite, or some particular gesture. It is only through belief in the gospel that the Holy Spirit seals the believer. Paul calls this saving gospel here in uh, verse 13, the word of truth. The source of absolute truth is the Word of God. John 17, 17, Jesus said to the Father, Your Word is truth. And the Holy Spirit will always work in accordance with the truth of man's sinful condition, the identity of Jesus Christ being the Son of God and Savior of the world, and the need to repent and believe in Christ, His death, burial, and resurrection for the salvation of sinners. Caution should be taken here, though, not to misread the King James 
uh, translation of Ephesians 1, 13, to indicate that the sealing of the Holy Spirit occurs after belief in the gospel is shown, and thus by way of subsequence, the sealing of the Holy Spirit is a second work of grace. It shouldn't be read to mean that. Theologically, it makes better sense to take the aorist participle, having believed, to indicate the sealing of the believer by the Holy Spirit simultaneously um, sealing that believer the moment he or she hears the gospel and believes it. Evidently, then, every true born-again believer is sealed with the Holy Spirit concurrent with belief in the gospel for salvation, as indicated here in Ephesians 1, 13 and 14. Let's look at the word sealed here used in verse 13. The word sealed used in, in verse 13 in the Greek text is uh, the word ephragisthiti, ephragisthiti, and it literally means having sealed. It's in the aorist tense and thus suggests the finality and irreversibility of the act of sealing the believer at the moment of faith. Here the usage implies sealed with safety and security and seems to be another indication of the eternal security of the believer. In the ancient world, the use of a seal was used primarily in three ways, which also answers to the three purposes for the sealing of the Holy Spirit over the life of a born-again believer. First, the ancient seal was given to denote that a document was genuine and certified by the one who sealed it. So also, when the Holy Spirit seals the believer of the gospel, the sealing of the Holy Spirit is God's certification that the salvation of the believer is real and authentic. The Bible knows of no Christian saved without the Holy Spirit. Every true Christian is sealed and indwelt by the Holy Spirit without exception. The sealing of the Holy Spirit is God's mark of identification. A person has truly believed the gospel and is marked out as genuinely saved. Second, the seal was affixed to denote ownership. Today's equivalent of this is the title deed to a property or piece of land. The one who has a title deed shows proof that he is the owner of a purchased property. This accords well with the imagery of the seal of the Holy Spirit within the context of Ephesians chapter 1. The believer is possessed by God and his possession of ownership as an eternal as an heir of eternal life in the kingdom of God and the purchase price is the shed blood of Jesus Christ that has redeemed the saved sinner as we learned earlier in Ephesians 1 Ephesians 1 7 for Paul had earlier said in verse 7 it is Jesus Christ in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. Thus, the seal of the Holy Spirit is the indelible sign and proof that God through Christ has redeemed us from sin for his redemptive ownership, liberating those who are once enslaved to the old life of sin. Uh, third, the seal is used to ensure the security and safety of the object sealed to protect its contents from being violated. During the time of the Old Testament period, the Greco-Roman world would place soft wax on a document, soft wax on a document, that was impressed with the regal or government insignia to guarantee authorship, authenticity, ownership, and authority. The seal of the Holy Spirit is God's means of protecting the believer. The Holy Spirit is God's seal of protection over the believer's life. Over the believer's life. <clears throat> Under this sacred seal, no man, demon, or any other thing can wrest the Christian from the secure position he has in Christ. 
the seal of the Holy Spirit is the imprint of the child of God that he or she is placed under the eternal security of salvation, whereby those who trust in Christ are secure forever in the Father's hands so that once they receive eternal life, vouchsafed and sealed by the Holy Spirit, they shall never perish, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. Let me read that again. The seal of the Holy Spirit is the imprint of the child of God, that he or she is placed under the eternal security of salvation, whereby those who trust in Christ are secure forever in the Father's hands, so that once so that once they receive eternal life, vouchsafed and sealed by the Holy Spirit, they shall never perish, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand, as Jesus promised in John 10:28. The sealing of the Holy Spirit is qualitatively, this is important to point out, the sealing of the Holy Spirit ministry is qualitatively different than the other ministries of the Holy Spirit in the life of the born-again believer. Let me explain. The indwelling of the Holy Spirit is the habitation of God's Spirit residing in every born-again believer forever. John 14, 23, Romans 8, 9. The baptism of the Holy Spirit places the believer at the moment of faith into the body of Christ. This baptism incorporates every new member into the Christian community and, and identifies that new believer with the crucified and risen Christ. 1 Corinthians 12, 13. The infilling of the Holy Spirit, or alternatively called being filled with the Holy Spirit, means that the believer is under the control and power of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 5.18 commands us to be filled or to be under the control of the Holy Spirit. The sealing of the Holy Spirit is different from these previous administrations of the Holy Spirit. The sealing of the Holy Spirit, spoken of three times in the New Testament, is the mark of identification that the believer is truly God's own and is kept by the power of God. It is an unbreakable seal of divine ownership and salvation. All three ministries of the Holy Spirit, spirit baptism, indwelling, and infilling, are given to the believer at the moment of salvation and conversion, with the infilling of the Spirit being the only one of the three that can be repeated in the believer's life. In verse 14 of Ephesians 1, Paul goes on to describe the sealing of the Spirit as the earnest or down payment of God to the believer in Christ. He says here, who is the uh, guarantee, that literally means who is the down payment of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. So let's recap before we move on to verse 14. God's own spirit comes to indwell the believer and secures and preserves his eternal salvation. The sealing of which Paul speaks refers to an official mark of identification placed on a letter, contract, or other document. That document was thereby officially under the authority of the person whose stamp was on the seal. So the Holy Spirit is the believer's stamp of approval that God has saved him or her and that God will guarantee to give that person his full heavenly inheritance. It's God's assurance that what he has begun in, uh, in saving the believer, the work of salvation, he will complete The down payment idea that Paul mentions here in relationship to the sealing of the Holy Spirit in Ephesians 1.14 uh, can best be illustrated when a consumer places a product to be purchased on what, on what is called the layaway plan. The consumer will place a certain percentage of money down to secure and reserve the product being uh, purchased until the total amount is paid. If the buyer's guarantee that he will, it, sorry, it is the buyer's guarantee that he will pay the rest of the amount in the future. And that's indicated by the fact he has put a down payment on the product. 
Well, likewise, the Holy Spirit is God's down payment on the life of the believer, which guarantees the fact God will make good on giving the inheritance of redemption to the believer sealed with the Holy Spirit. This will occur at the glorification of the body when the redemption of the believer is completed. The down payment of the Holy Spirit freely and graciously deposited by God in the Christian life is the Lord's irrevocable promise and guarantee he will finish the work of salvation in the life of the believer. The sealing of the Holy Spirit is the indelible, the indelible assurance of this wonderful fact. Down payment is the meaning behind the Greek word erebon, used by Paul in verse 14, and carries with it the idea that when God seals the born-again believer with the Holy Spirit, it is the guarantee not only of the security of the believer in Jesus Christ, but also the assurance that seal of the Holy Spirit is the down payment of the final inheritance of salvation to come. That's, that should give the believer great assurance that since he has been given the Holy Spirit and sealed by the Holy Spirit, that what God has begun, he will complete uh, in the life of the believer when it comes to salvation. Nowhere in the New Testament do we read the seal of the Holy Spirit can be broken. It is an irrevocable and irreversible work guaranteeing the eternal security and complete salvation of every born-again believer. And that's quite comforting and assuring in times of struggle and difficulty, is it not? I would say yes, it is. The Holy Spirit down payment is the irreversible guarantee that what God starts with the work of salvation, He will irrevocably complete it with the glorification of all believers. I believe Paul said this, said as much in Philippians 1.16 when he said to the believers, uh, he, uh, I'm confident of this very thing that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. That perhaps is a reference to the rapture of the church. The down payment of the Holy Spirit indicative by the sealing of the Holy Spirit in the life of the believer, is thus the guarantee of the full payment to come. God is the subject who alone performs this sealing action on the believer who is the proper object of this act of sealing, which is especially confirmed when Paul formally speaks of sealed believers in verse 14 here of Ephesians 1 as the redeemed possession, the redeemed possession, or the redemption of the purchased possession. Every bona fide Christian is redeemed, purchased, by the propitiatory sacrifice of Jesus Christ, and then sealed by the Holy Spirit for the completion of his or hers redemption. And what is the overarching purpose for the sealing and redemption of every believer. Well, Paul tells us here at the end of Ephesians 1.14, it is to magnify, praise, and glorify God and Jesus Christ as the author and finisher of our salvation in this world and in the world to come. This sealing of the Holy Spirit and consummation of our salvation should lead you and I the throne of grace to praise God for his glorious work of salvation in our lives. What more incentive do we need to glorify the triune God? Yes, God seals every born-again believer with the Holy Spirit the moment that they have heard and believed the gospel. The Holy Spirit works through the preaching of the gospel and no other. The reception and the sealing of the Holy Spirit is not some sacrament or religious rite or ritual you can box up and dole out on schedule or in within a uh, liturgical uh, rote and calendar. No, 
It is given when the sinner hears the gospel preached and believes upon that gospel, truly believes, then he is sealed by the Holy Spirit. He is safeguarded against falling away and reneging his faith and losing his salvation. True believers are sealed with the Holy Spirit for time and eternity. And that is another linchpin in the biblical assurance of salvation that every true born-again believer should have. God wants them to have. Salvation is a forever transaction. It is not a probationary uh, thing. It is truly an act of God from beginning to end and that is vouchsafed by the sealing of the Holy Spirit. So you can rest in your salvation that though sinful as we are and at times we fail the Lord, nevertheless His Spirit has sealed us, secured us, and saved us. And the moment we believe until God completes his salvation by giving us our glorified and resurrected bodies, all based on God's predetermined plan before he created the cosmos, that the second person of the divine trinity would incarnate a human body in the person of Jesus of Nazareth, die to save man and to give him his spirit. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit. We are sealed in that God uh, eternally secures us in our salvation. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit to confirm that this is the authentic, authentic work of God. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit, showing that we belong and are owned by our Creator and Redeemer. We are sealed by the Holy Spirit to denote uh, God's authority and power in saving us. And so, Paul, what Paul is basically saying here is that the Holy Spirit is given by God as His pledge and seal of the believer's future inheritance in glory in the ages to, to come when God will display the exceeding riches of his grace as Paul will later say in Ephesians 2 verses 6 and 7 well hopefully uh, now that you've seen God's purpose for sealing the believer with the Holy Spirit is part of our assurance and security as believers. Hopefully, you've seen from Ephesians 1, 13 and 14 that this gives you an immovable basis for being assured in your salvation, that God is at work, that he has saved you, and he will preserve and keep you for that day when the Lord Jesus returns from heaven sounds the trumpet blast and the dead in Christ will be raised and we who are alive at that time shall be caught up together to, with them to meet the Lord in the air. Uh, the, the sealing of God's Holy Spirit in the life of every believer is the assurance of that day to come. Well, until next time, Shalom Yeshua HaMashiach Alechem. May the peace of Jesus the Messiah be with you. Schofield Biblical Institute and Theological Seminary is a segment of Theology and Perspective of Heart, Michigan. We strive to bring you Bible teaching on a contemporarily relevant Bible topic. Dr. Woodhead, the president, has been teaching the Bible for 28 years. He is a pastor, author, and conference speaker on various biblical subjects. Dr. Woodhead's teaching includes the Old Testament and Biblical Hebrew. He attended Hebrew University in Jerusalem and Hebrew College in Massachusetts. 
If you have any question regarding today's broadcast or an interest in furthering your Bible education, contact him at Post Office Box 48, Hart, Michigan, 49420. That's Post Office Box 48, Hart, Michigan, 49420. Or on the web at schofieldinstitute.org. Let us know if you have any questions about today's broadcast. We look forward to providing you with the continuing Bible messages each week on this station. God bless you. Thank you.